In today's video we are going to talk about simulating a bus. So the first question that pops into mind is uh, what is a bus? Well, a bus is uh, a way to connect uh, two or more devices. It can be something uh, as simple as uh, a couple of wires or it can have an, an additional uh, logic to check, for example, who has access to the bus uh, and what operations are available. But from the point of view of the simulation, we are primarily interested in the operations that are available uh, using a bus. And from this point of view, we distinguish two buses. Uh, a data bus, this is typically used to connect a CPU to a memory device or uh, maybe to some I.O. device. And a control bus, uh, which is typically used to send control signals uh, either to the CPU or maybe to some uh, external uh, devices. So, for example, uh, using a data bus, you would have uh, operations like read and write, the same operations that uh, you would expect from a memory device. Uh, we already have a video about uh, simulating memory devices. Uh, and uh, a control bus would it, uh, expose operations like uh, set uh, signal, uh, check for a signal if it is set, and uh, with regard to signals, uh, consider for example um, an interrupt signal sent to a CPU or maybe a test signal, so So let's take a look. Uh, we are uh, using the Java system simulator, so uh, everything is in uh, Java. Uh, and uh, we have first uh, interfaces and then uh, the implementation uh, for uh, some uh, of those interfaces. So let's check first the data bus. Uh, the data bus uh, extends a generic data device. We looked at this one when we talked about uh, memory, but let's look uh, again. So this generic data device, the data device uh, actually uh, is an interface which uh, exposes the methods read and write. So from the point of view of the data bus, uh, we need to implement uh, those methods read and write. But uh, in addition, uh, we have the ability to attach a data device. And this data device is again a generic data device. So we can attach to the data bus a device that uh, exposes read and write methods. Uh, however, uh, we can have here uh, some additional parameters uh, because uh, a memory device would uh, accept read and write uh, using addresses specified from zero to the length of that device, uh, but uh, when we attach it to a data bus, we can map uh, those addresses uh, using these uh, start and end specifiers and uh, also an uh, offset which uh, uh, enables uh, to offset the address uh, within uh, the address space offered by the device. Uh, this will be more clear if uh, we look at an implementation. This is a data bus which produces no errors. We may imagine a data bus implementation that may throw an exception if, uh, for example, we try to address uh, uh, some uh, address space that is not mapped to a device. So what's happening here? Uh, we implement the data bus interface. Uh, we have uh, the configure and uh, initialization.
Asian routines, but uh, uh, currently this draw uh, this do this doesn't do anything. Uh, we have the attach data device, which simply adds uh, the device to uh, an array list of devices. And finally, we have uh, these uh, two methods, read and write. Uh, the read method uh, actually goes through all the devices, checks if this address, if the specified address is valid uh, for uh, the current device. And if it is, uh, then it will uh, execute a read operation. Now, uh, depending on the bus type, uh, it may be possible, and uh, in this case I mean depending on the physical bus type, it's possible to have multiple devices attached, and it's possible to even have uh, the same address uh, mapped to multiple devices. And in this case, it's up to the device uh, to know if uh, it should respond or not. So to accommodate for uh, such features, uh, the uh, data read from the device is actually ORed uh, with the data read from any other devices. Uh, there may be some configurations where, for example, uh, uh, in a 16-bit uh, data bus, uh, we may have two devices on the same address, and uh, one of them answers uh, on the lower 8 bits, and uh, the other device answers on the upper 8 bits, and so on. So it makes sense to have this OR here. Uh, however, uh, it's also possible to have a different implementation that, for example, uh, for, for example uh, has a break here, uh, in which case uh, only the first map device will uh, be accessed. Uh, something similar happens for the write. Uh, in this method, we have the address and uh, the value that's going to be written. Uh, again, uh, all the devices are uh, checked uh, when uh, devices found uh, to have a valid address. Uh, then uh, the write method of the device is uh, called. And uh, what's this uh, data bus device? Uh, this is uh, wrapping the generic data device. So let's take a look this one as well. Uh, what it does is uh, provides this uh, is valid address which uh, simply checks if the specified address is between start and end address. Uh, remember these uh, are the address to which uh, device is mapped. So the device itself may have an address from 0 to 1000 but it can be mapped uh, from uh, 3000 to 4000. So in this case, uh, the address is uh, checked to be within the mapped uh, addresses. Uh, then uh, it performs uh, read or write, uh, but uh, it uh, uses this uh, offset uh, that's uh, subtracted from the specified address. Uh, this enables, uh, for example, to have a device uh, that's, uh, that has multiple uh, portions mapped to different addresses. But uh, usually you would simply set uh, offset equal to start, and in this case uh, address uh, minus start will provide the mapping within the device uh, memory. Okay, I think that's uh, all uh, regarding the data bus. Now let's take a look at the control bus. As I said, the control bus is intended to provide control signals uh, such as uh, interrupts to the CPU or test signal or any other uh, control signals that the CPU may use. So uh, the control
control bus uh, provides methods for uh, setting a signal, clearing a signal. Uh, you can check if a signal is set. Uh, and uh, in addition, it's possible to set some data uh, alongside the signal. Uh, on some uh, older CPUs, uh, it was possible when uh, sending an interrupt signal. You can also send uh, data that will be executed uh, when the CPU executes the interrupt. So this uh, set signal data is provided for such uh, uh, signals. Uh, of course, uh, this facility can be uh, skipped and uh, the data itself may be provided on the data bus. But in a real device, uh, the additional data was indeed provided on the data bus. But in the simulation, it makes sense when uh, you set a signal also to set the uh, additional data here. So, how uh, uh, does the implementation look like? Um, there is a hash map with uh, the signals and another one with the signal data. The key in this case is a string which uh, specifies the signal. Uh, when the device is initialized, um, configuration uh, value of signals is uh, red and uh, it allows specifying what signals uh, are available on this control bus. Then uh, when uh, the set signal method is called, uh, what it does, it checks if um, the specified signal is defined for this control bus. If it isn't, then uh, it will throw a uh, unknown signal exception uh, but if it is specified it will simply uh, set in the hash map the signal with the specified name to have the boolean value 2 uh, similarly the clear signal will uh, set the signal to false uh, the is signal set will uh, simply return uh, the boolean value from the hash map uh, and the set signal data will uh, access the second hash map, the signal data hash map, and will set uh, the corresponding data. And similarly, get signal data will just uh, return uh, the data from the hash map. Okay, so uh, this covers the simulation uh, of uh, control bus.